So my name is uh, Quo Quote, or uh, Dan Friday. I'm a member of the Lummi Nation, or Lahoctomish people, or the Weklami people of the Salish Sea. And I kind of came into glass by proxy of being in Seattle. I was a mechanic and a tow truck driver. And I walked into a glass factory one day, and that was, uh, that was it for me. I, I just knew the course of my life would change after that. Like I said, I, I started in the factory, kind of realized that, hey, there might be another path, uh, and I get, might actually get to use some of the creativity that I had always fostered as a child and kind of been brought up around. And it just kind of seemed like a pretty clear path. I'm a master of none, but I, I try and use all of the techniques that kind of throw the kitchen sink at it. You know, I want to have fun doing it, and I enjoy the process of glass blowing, so I, I definitely try and, you know, find something I like and then put my twist on it. We're doing a lot of Marini this month during my residency, and that's just lots of prep work. You know, you kind of get lost in the process, and that's what I like about glass is sometimes just going through the motions is what opens your eyes to what is possible. Some people say happy accents, but I, I don't know. I just I feel like you just spend enough time with the material, and it will kind of show you what's available through it, you know, what might be next and sometimes I get this idea in my head of uh, this is the way it should be then other times I take a step back and I'm like hey maybe it's just the way it should be and that's maybe the beauty of the piece. So when I first got here, you're chomping at the bit to blow glass a little bit. Just kind of got started. I wanted to bang out some classics. Um, I just kind of get my bearings in the shop. A lot of times when I start for the day, I'll just sit down and pull a pony. And a little bit of that was my entry point. Definitely up and running now, got wheels. Uh, now we made a big Blue Jay today. At first I wasn't making things as big just because I wanted to get comfortable or, you know, just try and set achievable goals. Uh, and now, man, I'm sky's the limit. I have been doing some things I didn't think I was going to be able to do. My style of work is a little bit all over the place. I definitely do a lot of sculpting. Uh, there's a lot of glass blowing. For my own work, I definitely go these really heavy, solid, off-center sort of things. And for a lot of the shapes of my glass work, I, I use really simple lines and simple silhouettes. I don't spend too much time. There's some detail that you want and some detail that you don't. Uh, the bears used to have four legs and now they're just without legs and a little more glassy in my opinion. I enjoy the material. I enjoy the versatility of glass. It keeps you in the moment in a way that most things don't either. You know, time just disappears when you're turning the pipe. It has a lot of limitations too but it's a liquid, it's, it's so dynamic, it's hot, it has a mind of its own. Some would say it's a tough mistress, <laughs> but uh, it gets what it wants, you know, and if it doesn't like it, it doesn't work. And it tells you what you're allowed to do sometimes. You know, glass, it, there's a set of rules, but there's also the ability to be abstract and just kind of work within that parameters. I really like the equaling effect of glass. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from. It's a measurable thing. Like, it, it doesn't care who you are or where you came from, you know, if the proof is in the pudding kind of thing. Like, if you can't do it, it's pretty apparent that you can't do it. My time at the studio has been amazing. People have been so kind. Without all the bells and whistles, I, you know, all my glass dreams are sort of coming true in a lot of ways. At the studio, I've been able to realize things in glass that I haven't even been able to approach. Having access to a lot of this equipment and just the knowledge 
that is here. Uh, people are so professional. It took a few minutes to kind of get my bearings, but then once you're here, being able to create, and you know, I'm, I'm here late. Um, I'm here early. I'm the last one to leave, and I'm often the first one here. Um, I've been going real hard, but I've also been able to use other artists as a sounding board. That's a great community. That's what I think that artists can bring to the table at a place like this that is so historic and so professional and in such a, a hollowed hall. So it's like of Corning, you're here at Corning and to live in a town like this seems like every glass blower's sort of dream, you know, have such a base in, in history in glass, and, you know, to be able to access that history. I'm pretty aware of the history of where I'm from, but to come to a place like this, where there is, you know, the history is written here of glass. It's nice to learn that the studio has been so gracious. It's been a pleasure to work at the studio. The Lummi Nation was founded in 1855 uh, when my great great grandfather, Hey Taluk, OCM, signed the Point Elliot Treaty. And before then, there wasn't a Lummi tribe, it's the Wek Lemmy people. It's the people of the Salish Sea. And historically, totem poles, like I said, what people think of when they think of totem poles, if it often goes to that, that Southeast Alaska. And what my uh, grandfather card was story poles or totem poles. And, uh, you know, there's often a story that goes with them. In my work, I have some, you know, like this is the, the full circle totem and it has the cedar tree, the salmon and the bear. And uh, the story of that is, is one of the circle of life that just that symbiosis that uh, as they're trying to restore these fishing grounds, these spawning beds that get washed out so easily as the salmon numbers are dwindling, they realize that they need to let the wildlife have access and you can't just completely fence the whole riverside and these rivers are a really precious resource. You know, you need to let the cedar tree grow up to the bank. The strong roots of the cedar tree hold the riverbank together from washing out. And the bears and the fox and the ermine and the wolves and everybody that drags the carcasses out, they grab that salmon and they drag it into the trees and that riparian, that ecosystem in the soil, it just creates that, fertilizes, it just brings all that nitrates up into the soil and fertilizes the trees and you need the trees along the riverbank to be strong to keep the river healthy and just that full circle and that's the story from my totem here that I made at Corning. Like I left off, I just, that resurgence of Coast Salish work, uh, being able to see that in, in the modern times and having people know what that work looks like and being able to use glass, you know, it's also very contemporary and it has its own age old history. And, you know, this great intersection for me, I get to study my own culture and I'm using things that have thousands of years of uh, cultural relevance according to glass and glass has you know such a great history and it's kind of in my happy place right now and that permanence of it and when I think about uh, quote quote or Joseph Hilaire my great grandfather's work um, that really inspired me and has, has always been a great influence on me to know that almost all of his totem poles save one that's about 80 percent fiberglass is they've all kind of returned to the earth they're, they're a lot like ice sculptures you know those artifacts they don't remain the same way. They have an ethereal quality to them. Don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. You know, you wanna study the work of your ancestors, but you don't wanna go back and just replicate their work. You know, that's when you hit that ancestral wall. Your job to be a link in the chain is to be the next link to hold the next generation. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to tell my stories and glass and my family stories in this, uh, in this medium.